Maybe we better go ahead and start. <laughs> They're excited to ring that bell and let the whole neighborhood, let the whole neighborhood hear. It's time to be in the Lord's house. Uh, I was asked uh, with a note here to share with you that this is for our youth um, to be reminded that senior youth will meet at Andy and Melanie's, uh, Andy and Melanie Reich's, next Sunday, July 27th at 6 p.m. In the bulletin we had 6.30 and it was normally going to be a meeting here at the church. Uh, but that's been changed because now it's going to be a, um, a picnic. Um, hot dogs and drinks will be provided. Uh, you're asked to bring a dish to share, uh, which means mom or someone else uh, to help you out there and bring a swimming suit because they'll be swimming as well. That's next Sunday. Not here at the church at your 6.30 regular time, but at Andy and Melanie Reich's at 6 p.m. Um, Andy, all that's correct? Okay, thank you. Um, do you want to make a note here? I have a note in the bulletin. New, new members will be received into membership in August. That'll be the 24th of August, uh, the way that is set up right now. So. Uh, if you're interested, you can see me about that. Um, I'm just going to go through some of these pretty quickly. Don't want to forget that immediately following this service, and we had said now for weeks that we would have um, somewhat of an abbreviated service because of the community worship in at the park in Middleburg. Most of the churches uh, are not having anything in their church this morning. They're meeting all together in Middleburg. But since our time was at 845, I thought we could still take advantage of the time to be together here. And then for those of you who wish to go to the park, and I hope you're planning on it, uh, that you can uh, still attend there by 10 o'clock. Um, I'll just ask you to look over the rest of the announcements. Uh, there are some, um, of course, the church picnic and pool party uh, has been scheduled. Some small group get-togethers um, have, been, have been scheduled as well. They will be in the bulletin, I think, for uh, next, next Sunday, those other announcements. Um, but check out, your, check out the announcements there in the bulletin. Are there any others? You'll also notice, by the way, that there is a folder. Uh, this is our Gideon Sunday. It was originally going to be next Sunday. But I received a call from our friend Bob Apple, who talked me into moving it to today, and, and, and for good reason. Because today we are blessed to have uh, a very special guest with us, uh, who traveled to get here further than any of you traveled to get here. Uh, because Graham Ellis, who is with us today, is here from Wales. So uh, he's going to be leaving here and going to the Gideon Conference. Uh, and that's where again, Graham? Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. Uh, but he's traveled all over the states. And I guess uh, we'll be doing some more of that besides Philadelphia while he's here. Uh, so we are really blessed to have Graham. And I, a couple of the fellas in the church here, the, uh, Tom and Leroy, who apparently already heard you speak, before you even got here said, you're getting a really good speaker today. Uh, but um, uh, I was confident of that anyhow, uh, because Bob, uh, Bob does goes to a little extra trouble, it seems, to, uh, to take care of us, and we appreciate it very much. So today is Gideon Sunday. Uh, there are no other um, special offerings uh, where it's not Mission Sunday, it's not Building Fund Sunday, uh, it is Gideon Sunday. So if you would like to give a gift that will go directly to the ministry of the Gideons, uh, you may do so. There's a folder here, I have an envelope inside, uh, and you can, you can do that. Uh, actually, if you're, and if you're not prepared to do that today, you can do that on another Sunday. Just hold on to this and turn it in. When the offerings are taken, uh, the counters will apply it uh, to, the, uh, to, the Gideon, to the ministry of the Gideons. I think that's all I, oh, Hoagie Pickup. This is for the youth also. Um, Hoagie Pickup is Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday, July 22nd from 4 to 6 o'clock. So if you order Hoagie uh, to support our youth group's ministry, 
uh, that you can pick up your hoagie or hoagies uh, Tuesday from 4 to 6 o'clock downstairs in the fellowship hall. And I think that's all I have. But do you have any other announcements, anything that needs to be shared? Um, there are some, some things coming up. Uh, Morning Glory Girls, of course, are going to be meeting at the regular time, all right? Uh, do you have one more week after this, Pat? Yeah, this week and next. This week and next week, okay. And then, um, pardon? <laughs> Was there something else? I'm sorry. No, okay. Um, so for the next two weeks, the Morning Glory Girls will be meeting uh, at, at uh, Harvey and Pat's home. Also, let's see. The community worship in the park, don't pay attention to that for next Sunday. It is today. Uh, there was something else scheduled. I think it was the youth meeting that was supposed to be on the 27th. And we've already corrected that too with it being at 6 o'clock instead of 6.30. Um, take a look there, young people. Uh, the children's church memory verse. Uh, this today, of course, we have today and next Sunday yet for the July memory verse uh, from the Gospel of Mark. Next week, we'll have the verse in for uh, the month of August, so you can start preparing uh, to memorize that for Children's Church. Uh, let me ask, is there Children's Church planned today? Okay, so children, you'll be, you'll be just remain, remaining here in the sanctuary. And there won't be a children's moment today because I wanted to give Graham as much time uh, as possible. Also, during the prayer time this morning, I know sometimes, uh, and, and not that it's a bad thing, because it certainly isn't, uh, to go into some details sometimes so we know specifically what to pray for when we're lifting up our prayer concerns. But today, if it's possible, uh, if you're lifting up a name of someone, to just lift up the name um, so that we can, again, we want to give Graham as much time as we can and still be able to get to the park uh, for those who are planning to do that uh, by 10 o'clock. Um, there are some special days uh, being shared in the lives of our members. We've got uh, Justin and Beth celebrating an anniversary. Is this two? Four. No. <laughs> Four years already? I can't be. Whew, I am getting old. Uh, Four? Wow, okay. <laughs> Justin and Beth celebrating four years. Uh, that would be uh, on the 24th. Also, birthdays um, this week, Jeanette Reich, our organist, of course. Uh, Jim Gill and Josh Yoder are celebrating birthdays. Bonnie Hibbs celebrating her birthday. Ethan Craven and Tom Snyder and Sue Gill. So all those folks are celebrating birthdays. Are there, is there anyone we missed? Anyone celebrating an anniversary that we may not have included or missed somehow or a birthday? No? Okay. Uh, well, we do have, of course, first-time visitor uh, with, with Graham uh, being here today. You, f you folks have been here before for various, for various things, but we're so glad that you're here. And I, I know that uh, although you may be on the sidelines this morning, you won't be up speaking, uh, but I know that your schedule, because Bob keeps you guys pretty busy. <laughs> um, and I just really appreciate all that the Gideons do. The ministry is wonderful and this church has uh, always been e excited uh, to support the ministry and of course with, uh, let, let me ask you, let me ask all of our Gideons, uh, Ronnie, uh, all the Gideons, uh, Clint, uh, Leroy, Tom, all of you Gideons that are here this morning, will you stand up? There you go. And I should say auxiliary. And I should say Gideon, uh, Butch, yes. And, and the auxiliary as well, because we have several in, in the, uh, that are serving in the auxiliary. Um, pardon? Right. Um, and we'll bring that up during our prayer time. Um, okay, well, we thank you uh, for being here, and we look forward to what, you, what the Lord has put on your heart uh, to share with us today. Are we set up and working? Okay, we're good. Um, all right, well, I'm going to give you 15 seconds. No, I'm only kidding you. Uh, let's stand up and greet one another in the name of the Lord. Good morning, Beth. How's Beth? Good. Good morning, Ron.
God bless you. Good. How are you doing? Good. Good. You look well. <laughs> Good morning, Jim. How are you doing? Oh my, oh my That's gosh. All right. That's all right. That's all right. Well, no, it hasn't been that long. I just. <laughs> We had our class reunion last night, so I'm working on very little sleep. <laughs> How's Chris? Good. Is, is she? Good morning. And happy birthday in advance. Well, tell her I asked about her. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, girls. Again. Good morning. Oh, well, you why don't you why don't you join them over there? Good morning, young fella. Good morning. How are you, Don? Pretty good. Doing good. Good morning, Crystal. How are you doing? Good. Good. Good morning. <laughs> you look handsome as ever. Oh, I am. I am. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Rochelle. How are you, hon? Good. Oh, I know. I know. What's going on here? We don't have any air or what? Very warm. Good morning, Darla. Yeah, I did. She moved, she moved over with him now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Donnie. All right, let's sing together. Shout to the north. I didn't have any Welsh tunes, but I did have an Irish tune, so I just ran through it all. Men of faith, rise up and sing of the great and glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak, in your brokenness complete.
Please be seated. Isn't it awesome to wake up in the morning, go to church, be with all the people that, many of them that you love most in the world, and join your voices together, singing praises to our one and only, our one true God. Woo! And I did it with my best Welsh accent. Uh, not really, sorry Graham, don't have it down. We're going to uh, offer up a word of prayer uh, to our God. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day, this opportunity, Lord. Every day, you, you fill the hours with opportunities to, to bless your name. To reach out in some way with love and affection. The good news of the gospel. To share Christ. To live according to your will and by the lead of your, your wonderful spirit, Lord. We are so blessed. And so we thank you for your powerful and wonderful presence with us, Lord. We want to remain with you always. And you tell us in your word that those who remain faithful will be saved. And so we thank you for that promise in particular, Lord, but for all of the promises that you offer us through your word. We thank you for Graham Ellis and for all the Gideons and Auxiliary who are involved in that amazing ministry throughout the world. And we would ask, Lord, your protection for each and every one, Graham and others who are traveling to take that message of good news to folks in some cases who have never ever heard it. And so provide protection for those as they travel. Bless them and the words they speak, Lord. That everything that they say and everything they do as well as everything we say and everything we do will bring you praise and honor and glory. For that's our mission, Lord to share the good news of Jesus Christ and bring glory to your name. Thank you, Father, for loving us, for remaining with us day by day, sanctifying us, Lord, through your Spirit, and giving us the hope and promise of eternal life with you. We just lift up our voices in praise, Lori, and with great, great gratitude. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. As I mentioned a moment ago, uh, if, if we can keep our prayer request, you do have the pew pads. And there is a place there to, you can pass these down the aisle. And there's a place there also to lift up uh, any, any prayer requests you have and our prayer team of course will pray over every single request uh, I have a couple I want to lift up of course Gary Sanner and Theda um, so please pray for them also uh, yesterday uh, in Danville I don't even know it's been in the news yet but uh, a homeless person threw himself in front of a train uh, in Danville while the Iron Heritage Festival was going on. So you wonder why there should be homelessness in America. But there is. And there are people who are desperate. So don't know the name. Just uh, lift up that person and all the, all the homeless people throughout the world. Yes. Global peace, yes. You know, we talked about a trip to Israel next March. Um, by the looks of things, that may be on hold. Um, of course, we were just there in March. But uh, please pay, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for the peace, uh, peace throughout the world, as Karen said, global, global peace. That would include the Ukraine as well and with all that they're dealing with. 
Do you have prayer concerns, phrases that you'd like to share today? Two separate people. I had prayed the other week for Helen Smith. She, I haven't had an update, so pray for her. Continue praying for her. And also I found out uh, uh, Shirley Smith. She also needs prayer. Uh, also, Milford Smith is in the hospital. And uh, David Harold just had surgery because Esther had called me uh, to tell me that. So David Harold, I don't know why we're getting so much noise from here, but um, David Harold and uh, Milford Smith, please pray for them. Cheryl Shock and Chad Lawler. Praise, a uh, praise, um, Savage, Steve Savage. He's home and he's walking. Thank you, Carolyn. Continue to pray for Tina Reichenbach. Thank you, Stuart. Prayers for Kaylee and I were flying to what? Prayers for Kaylee and I were flying to Sarasota tomorrow to visit Jeremy's. Keep my friend Marlene Rumheller in your prayer. Today is the third Sunday of July. Normally the day will be the Rhett Bride. So I ask prayer this morning for all the Rhett children, their parents, and their caregivers. Thank you, Jim. Yes. Any others? I think we should remember that woman that the rock was thrown into her windshield and the family. She's not good at all. So she has a lot of road to cover in healing. So pray for her. Spencer. Okay, thank you. Of course, for our Gideons uh, worldwide, um, there's so much tragedy in the world. And we know we're going to face tragedy. But no one ever has to face it alone. There is a God in heaven. Amen. No one ever needs to face the difficult things of life alone. And yet many are. Both in this country, in Wales, all over the world. And so it is our mission. Right in our backyard, in our neighborhoods in our community to be a witness of God's love. We never know when that witness, that testimony, that time of sharing might keep somebody from throwing themselves in front of a train. Or doing other things, not necessarily to themselves, but to someone else. And so let's pray for the world and for peace, but not just peace. Peace in people's hearts, that they would know the Lord Jesus who can save them eternally, and give them the strength and the encouragement and the courage to face, as one hymn writer would say, the future unafraid. So let's keep that in mind as we worship today. And please also pray for the community service today. This is a witness to the entire community that the body of Christ is not separate. We may worship in different locations, but we're all one in the Lord. 
a, Graham was sharing with me earlier that they have a very good relationship. I mean, here he is in Wales. He has a very good relationship with the Baptist Church in Orlando. Brothers and sisters, separated by miles and miles of ocean, but one in the Lord, just as we are with Trinity in Middleburg, Grace Covenant in Middleburg, Boyer Mennonite, we're all brothers and sisters in the Lord. And so let us come together today, and let's pray together and for one another that this service will be, first of all, whatever, we want it to glorify God. We want to share the good news where there's opportunity and praise God for what he is doing. But we also want it to be a witness to this community that we stand together as people of God. We're not ashamed of the gospel. We'll meet in a public park. We'll meet wherever God calls us to meet. So let us all be a part of that today. And if you can't possibly be there, please pray uh, for what God's going to do there. I'm just going to lead us in prayer now, uh, rather than us take the time to uh, pray. But uh, God, may, you may have come in here this morning with who knows what on your heart. Our God can relieve you of whatever it is that you brought in here with you today. He is our help in time of trouble. Amen. He is our strong tower. He is our refuge. He is the one that gives peace that passes understanding. Grace that's sufficient. And so, so let's turn our hearts to this one who loves you and me so much that he would give his only son. Let's pray. Let's go before the throne of grace and lift up our prayers, our intercessions today, and then we'll join our voices together as we pray our Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. God, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your wonderful grace, Lord. It is truly amazing. We thank you, Father, for the help, the consolation, the comfort, all those things, Lord, that you make available to us through Jesus and through the power of your Spirit working in us. Our hearts can be heavy at times, Lord, with the things of this life. And yet, Lord, you come in like a rushing wind and bring into our lives just what we need at just the moment we need it to bring refreshing, to bring hope, to bring peace, and to affirm again and again and again, Lord, how great your love is for us. And it's that love, Lord, that lifted me. That's that love that has lifted us, your people, your body. That makes us want to come and worship you. That makes us want to gather together with our brothers and sisters in the faith, whether they worship here or somewhere else. That's the kind of love, Lord, that has changed the world changing hearts day by day and we praise you and thank you for it Lord for we ask all these things Lord and we lift every name that has been named here this morning every situation we lift it before you Lord and we do so in the name of him who saves Jesus Christ the Lord who taught us how to pray when we say our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. I'm going to ask our uh, ushers to come forward before we turn it over to Graham and, um, and receive your gifts and your tithes. Um, Kevin, when you come, um, just keep the offering in the, in the back. Uh, is that okay, Jeanette? We won't have the offertory this morning, again, uh, because, of, because of time. to speak after singing those three hymns and those choruses the way I have you got another no I'm only joking uh, if you could get those lights off it would help um, but I'm not here primarily as a Gideon I'm here because at 17 years of age I knelt and said yes to Jesus and I don't want any of you to go away this morning thinking oh I'm going to learn more about the Gideons as pastor said you need to know more about Jesus if you know more about Jesus, then the Gideons will come along afterwards. Um, I was sorely tempted after traveling up to North Pennsylvania yesterday and listening to a Gideon and listening to Bob for, to forget the Gideon message and to preach the gospel. But I heard that you get it preached here every Sunday. So that's, that, and I've just said to Pastor, the spiritual temperature in the USA is much higher than it is in Wales. Even though we are the land of revival, we are God's country. If you don't speak Welsh, you'll never get to heaven. You know that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going either because I can't speak Welsh. I would say Burda, which is good morning in Welsh. Uh, and that's it. Um, now my, my technical man has got it going, so uh, let's see if we can uh, move on. Uh, Gideon's International. We really are an international association. 197 countries. When we move over to Philadelphia now next Tuesday, I guess, I don't know, but uh, it'll be about 100 countries represented. Um, we're a worldwide ministry and uh, we're excited about it. You can uh, guess that perhaps from uh, uh, what uh, message you've had from Thursday night. I got overexcited at that dinner um, uh, that we had, but uh, it, it, it's uh, sadly only uh, 16 countries are able to help themselves. So 100 and, I'm not a numbers man, as the Gideons know, but 181 countries um, uh, are not able to support themselves. They need help. And we listened last night, some of us, to a guy from India. Uh, they have a budget uh, or an estimate of trying to distribute, listen to this, 10 million copies of God's Word in India. 
they can only afford to buy two million. So we, uh, self-supporting countries, and there are some of them, uh, and India, it says, is a national association, but it is not a self-supporting country. And so uh, we are concerned, as we will be next week, that we help some of these countries. So uh, Dale, who's with me and uh, has brought me, and that's the, one of the reasons we're here, we're, we were in Ghana uh, a few years ago, and uh, we were able to uh, uh, present scripture. So let me tell you a story. No, not about Dale or, or me, um, but it's about uh, 24 men. If you take 24 men from different socio-economic backgrounds, different characteristics, different standings, different um, uh, amounts of money in their pocket, um, uh, but with a love for the Lord and a concern because they are Gideons that they want to share the word of God in, in, an, in another country and help. If you put those 24 people together and send them at their own expense to another country where they meet up with another group of men from another socio-economic uh, background, uh, another culture, yes, a different colored skin, uh, maybe not as affluent, they don't have as many dollars in their back pocket as uh, you have or as pennies or pounds I have in mine, but they still have the same love for the Lord Jesus and they still have a concern that their compatriots in their country should have a copy of God's word. And so you put those two together with this common bond of love for the Lord Jesus, the kind of love that I want you to go with. I don't want you to go away with uh, the knowledge of the Gideons this morning so much. I want you to go away with a knowledge that Jesus loves you. Jesus cares for you. Jesus died on the cross for you. Jesus paid his, gave his own life for you. He shed his own blood for you as he did for me, and I didn't realize that until I was 17 years of age. Uh, and that was not too many years ago. Uh, well, well, yeah. <laughs> so, you put these men together, and uh, you take them to a country called Ghana. Now, Ghana is a Christian country. I had been to India back 17 years ago, and that isn't a Christian country, although we had a great deal of uh, freedom to present God's word. But Ghana is a different country. It, was, it is a Christian country. And we were able to go to, to that country. Accra is the capital down there in the south, and uh, it's there on the peninsula of uh, uh, Africa. And I went to a Methodist church, believe it or not, that's a Methodist church in Ghana on that first Sunday. And I was expecting the ladies to come out and dance this morning. I mean, you did a very good at clapping and singing, but, but you didn't dance. And you didn't start at half past seven, you started at half past eight. You will finish by ten o'clock today. I finished at three o'clock in the afternoon there. Um, well, no, I didn't. We finished about midday, but they kept me talking and so forth. But it was a wonderful experience. Now, I, I get excited, but I don't get too emotional. Ask my wife. I do love you, darling. Yes, I do. Even though you went and spent a lot of my money yesterday in the mile down the road. Well, but, but I don't get too emotional. But on this occasion, uh, when I saw what they did in this church, they took, and you only said one offering. I'm glad it'll be for the gift. No, uh, uh, they took nine offerings that Sunday morning. It was Harvest Festival. It was a special service. And then they had seven offerings, one for each day of the week. All right? So those ladies and gentlemen in that congregation, their names all reflect on the day that they were born. So the Monday bucket was brought out, and everybody born on a Monday dances through the aisle, puts their money in the Monday box, and sits down. Then the Tuesday bubble comes out, and the names that are reflected on Tuesday, and there were $10,000 collected that Sunday morning. There's a lot more to that story, but um, uh, there was also a bit of competition. That particular Sunday, the Saturdays won they got the most money through the people who were born on Saturday but that's another story um, but we were, we were uh, able to, to give out testaments it was just a joy to present and it was so easy this was our taxi driver that first Sunday morning taking us to church uh, he didn't really need a Bible because he was a Christian he says I love the Lord Jesus which is I hope you'll be saying to me when you leave there I love the Lord Jesus if you don't then we, talk, we need to talk to you that's important this morning. If you don't know Jesus like this guy did and was freely able to tell me that he loved the Lord Jesus, you need to tell us because you need to know him. That anything could happen to you between now and going to the park. Anything could happen between now and tomorrow morning when you go to work. And where would you spend eternity? That guy knew where he was going to spend eternity and he valued that little testament that he, that he had. And so, um, as did those boys in the, ne the next day when we went to school. And you'll see the look on their faces, you know, that little girl, you know, it probably will be the only copy of God's word that she had. 
She valued it. She took it. And the smile on her face said everything. She said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. And, and that went on and on and on. There's a whole group. We were able to go, now I know you're not able to, uh, the Gideons that are here, go into schools. We didn't go into the classrooms. They came out into the open. And we spoke to them in their groups and they all received testaments. In our country, praise God, uh, we are able to go right into the classroom. Right into the assembly. My wife and I spend... Uh, all the mornings talking. We have an hour sometimes. So we are very, very privileged um, uh, to be able, as we were in Ghana, um, to, to present God's Word. That wasn't a, a, a stage photograph. I was just going from one classroom to another and I just took that photograph of the girl, naturally anxious to read the Word of God, just like you are. Just like I am. We want to feed on God's Word. This particular copy, somebody fed on it. The termites. It's a holy Bible, this. Got holes right through from cover to cover. Thousands of converted termites in Ghana because they ate the word of God. Just like you eat the word of God. Right? Because that's how you want to grow spiritually. That's how you want to be a witness in the community. That's how you want to exhibit what Jesus has done for you to who you live with. And so these people are reading the word of God and it's possibly the only copy. Now that is an interesting one. We were only able to take sufficient of the, 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 the whole Bible. Uh, the lady is the headmistress, head teacher, uh, and uh, the others are two teachers that desperately wanted a copy. She said, can we have a whole copy because we will teach the boys and girls about Jesus from the Bible rather than the New Testament. I can only get, hazard a guess as to who had the Bible at the end when we left. I think it was the head teacher. Uh -huh. We were able to take the water of life. No, I didn't drink from that can, I can assure you. Uh, I protected my health as much as I possibly could. But it illustrates that we were taking what was going to be uh, a life-giving word to so many of those boys and girls. We were, I was actually only visited schools, but Dale, who was there, went to other institutions as well. And you'll see the numbers that we uh, presented at the end of the slide. But that face tells it all. They were so grateful to accept the word. We take so much for granted in our country, and I guess you're doing the same in the United States. We take the word of God. I don't know how many copies you've got on your shelf. I know how many I've got, and I'm sometimes ashamed. I do actually have quite a lot in my garage, because I hold a lot of the Bibles, and Gideons come to me, and they pick them up, put them in their car, and we go off. And we have a great deal of liberty in Wales, even though, as I said to Pastor, the spiritual temperature is not as good. Now, the, the illustration is there, that they are so keen. They lived, sadly, with so much rubbish, trash uh, around them. Um, I wouldn't want to be living like that. Uh, we, in our society, don't live in that sort of condition. But we do live with an awful amount of trash and rubbish surrounding us. Um, with forgiveness, uh, your television programs are not quite as good as ours. But there's more rubbish and pornography on our televisions in the Western world than I think there is on the United States television. But there's still rubbish and trash that fills our minds with things that we ought not to have. And you may have seen our papers of lately where high-ranking personalities have uh, been put in prison and, uh, and, and are, are being taken to the courts because of, of their molesting of children and uh, uh, their incest and so forth and it's rubbish, it's trash and we want to be done with it and that's why in Ghana giving these boys and girls and the young people, the testaments, the transformation of their faces. The other emotional experience that I went through was that I pleaded with uh, teachers not to let the boys and girls lose the, uh, the, the, the culture that they had. The, the, the churches were full, all right? They came and went. You've all been very, very patient, and you're sitting. You won't walk out on me. Uh, but in that Sunday morning service, two or three people came in, sat for perhaps an half an hour, and then six people would walk out and, and, and so forth. But, but they still had this hunger and desire that they would want to please God, as you'll see again from a, a slide in a moment. 
The assemblies were just a joy to be able to speak to them. We didn't speak to them too long. It's uh, 98 degrees humidity up in the 80s. Uh, uh, not not uh, good to stand around in that temperature, uh, although I loved it, bearing in mind that uh, we've got bad weather in Wales. Uh, we don't have the same sunshine. Can I mention Baptist in a Methodist church? Uh, that's the following Sunday. We went to a Baptist church. And he had actually just come back from the United States. He, I think he's videoing his congregation there, which gave me liberty to go into the gallery and video and also get, again, a little bit emotional as uh, they were listening to the Word of God. I only gave a little Gideon story there. I um, uh, wasn't uh, able to preach. The pastor preached the sermon. But you can see that you know, they, they're, they're so excited and they were so thrilled to be in church that Sunday morning. We took five 500,000 copies of uh, God's Word, locked them in a steel container because unfortunately there was the um, temptation for not the Christians in Ghana, and there are people who are not Christians in Ghana obviously, and it's getting a, um, certainly a commercialized uh, secular society. There were the uh, televisions and there were uh, evidences of um, uh, the move away from what uh, I saw as a Christian country, but uh, um, it was to just make sure that the 500 copies that we took were put into the places that we wanted them to in vehicles in Ghana they had in India we hired taxis but uh, that's another story that's the Holy Bible um, oh, so I brought it up too soon uh, Jesus can do it all beauty salon <laughs> I bet that won't be on the one that my wife's going tomorrow morning to have her hair done before we go to Philadelphia uh, uh, in uh, the mall down here in Middleburg um, but when you went to, uh, to anywhere you saw Holy Spirit garage and, 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 and the, the evidence of the Christian ethos and, and culture that they had was there throughout the whole of the capital Accra and then when we moved up to Kumasi which is uh, up 200 miles up north uh, it was there the same thing now, that's the school canteen. If you are quickly, you're counting, I can tell you, I'm not a numbers man, but I've counted them carefully. There's 64 different um, vessels there. That meant there was a class of 64. Any teachers here? No. No teachers in... Uh, how many of you have got in your class? 23? Yeah, 23. 64. Okay, or so 65 people in the class. And that was regular. In fact, when I was in India, um, one of the classes had 127. But that's another story. But that's their lunch. Um, and it was served uh, hygiene and political correctness. The great big bowl came up with a big lady and... No spoons or ladles. Uh -huh. That's how they served it into those dishes. Um, and I guarantee those kids weren't ill. Guarantee. If I had eaten it, my stomach would have not been cooked with that, I doubt. But, but there we are. Um, this is an interesting one, uh, very quickly. That's the outside of the building. That's the inside of the building. We went on a Tuesday afternoon there. The principal uh, didn't think it would convene. It was a sports event going on. But we went the next morning. Every Wednesday morning in Ghana, in their schools, is assembly. Christian assembly for one hour. They said, headmaster said, come tomorrow morning and take the uh, talk in the assembly. There were about 800 children in that building. Um, you saw the outside of it, and no windows. This little 16-year-old lass, she's got crazy for Christ written on her. You can't see that. She got out of one of the mics, one of these. Right? What are these? I can't see the microphones. Yeah, what are those tiddly little things hanging from the ceiling? Well, aren't they, they're so small. You know, they were great big, huge boxes up the side of each of these buildings and she got over that mic and the tambourines and the flag waver and she wound those 800 kids up singing choruses and hymns and while she was singing I said to the, uh, the principal actually how long have I got oh he said haven't they told you you've got 30 minutes to preach them don't talk to them about the Gideons preach to them I said oh I can't do it no I didn't uh, I didn't have my bible um, I didn't have any notes, well I haven't got any notes now, but as you can guess I don't need them. Uh, <laughs> but I thought, Lord, what, what am I going to talk to? And he said, tell them about Jesus. So I took Romans 12, 1. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto which is your reasonable service. And God allowed me to preach and speak to these. I couldn't see them, other than lots of white teeth. Um, but uh, they were, you, couldn't, you could hear a pin drop. They listened to those 27, 28 minutes that I had. And my Swedish Gideon said, wow, he said, that was good. And it was just that 
kind of atmosphere. Uh, it was just, I don't know, you could do that in your school. Oh, you won't have 800, I guess, in your local school. You've got 23 in your class. So here we are. But um, we gave bi people Bibles. That was new for all. On that occasion, I had a thousand people in front of me. The head teacher had said, boom, 300 people over, 300 people here. Yeah, yeah. And then he gave me the mic. And I'm not allowed to shout like I did on that day, but I didn't need a microphone to speak to those thousand people. Galatians 5.12, you know it well. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, meekness, faithfulness, and I've got them in different order. Well, you can see that. Self-control, it says, abstinence is safe. Abstinence costs nothing. Just say no to sex. Now, I don't know whether you could say that in your class to your, and get away with it, but that was what the ethos, that was what was happening in the schools, and that was what they were teaching, and it was just wonderful. And they were exhibiting all of those attributes, and now I don't have time to preach on Galatians 5, but there we are. Thought for the week, be purposeful. Those who stand for nothing, fall for anything. Got it? Okay. Next week's sermon, if you like, Pastor. Okay. 431 scriptures went out. 900 schools, 20 colleges, and so forth. Right? We've got um, Gideons in 197 countries. You don't need to know these facts. You just need to know that God is using this work. Right? God is using the Gideon ministry. And I wish I was here after this next week in Philadelphia because I can't wait to sit on the edge of my seat and listen to the testimonies of the guys and girls that come from Africa and Ethiopia and they were, Brazil is bursting with work and uh, yes, Colombia, uh, just amazing. The work is going on. We are your ambassadors, we are your extended arm, if you like. We are there on your behalf. Uh, whether you can get into the schools as a Methodist church, I doubt it. We can't get into, um, churches as, uh, into schools as churches, but they accept us in uh, the British Isles as Gideon. So we are the extended arm of the church, your representatives. And so we would value your prayer. We would value, yes, any giving, but uh, we're not here for that this morning. Uh, obviously, a Bible, a little uh, Blue Testament like this costs $1.25, right? Um, and uh, um, we are anxious that boys and girls, men and women throughout the world, at this moment in time, Nashville is our international headquarters. There's a pile of invoices. I checked on this before I left. Uh, last week, but the guys down there cannot say, yes, send 10,000 Bibles to wherever, because there's no cash in the bank uh, to, to do that. We are going to be distributing close on a million this, uh, no, where are we now? Um, 85 thousand, 85 million, I'm not number, 85 million um, uh, numbers. We're close on getting to 2 billion since the work started 140 years ago. So God is using the work. Boys and girls, men, we heard of some tremendous testimonies and I'll get told off by Dale for not giving you a testimony of someone who came to know the Lord Jesus. But they are multiple. Uh, and uh, really, it is amazing what God is doing through a copy of a God's Word. And you can be part of this work as you pray, as you give, as you fill in the form and uh, get more information from the local camp here uh, and uh, get involved in, the, in this work as uh, God is using mission-minded churches. Amen. Thank you for, for that. But uh, let, uh, just be aware, just be aware that uh, I, I've come as, as a believer, I've come as a Christian, but I've come as a Gideon, three and a half thousand miles, delighted to do so, to just to tell you that God is using this Gideon ministry in 197 countries. And boys and girls and men and women are coming to know. How we would love to have thought that that guy who, or girl who threw themselves in front of a train would not have done that had they have found one in the hotel room or one would have given them a, on the, uh, as a down and out on the streets. Um, and uh, we're doing that in Cardiff. We've got them. We've got them. We've got them. Uh, my wife is saying, I've had my time. Right, she's a good timekeeper. Okay. <laughs> Pastor, I am so appreciative of being able to come to this particular church. Don't thank Bob. Just thank the Lord and thank your pastor for allowing us this freedom to be able to share something of what God is doing and we'll be in the park by 10 o'clock <laughs> hey, won't we? Yes. Yeah. Well, are you going to join us? oh yes oh yes oh Jesus I know that you uh, 
got the abbreviated version. Uh, maybe we can have Graham come back this way uh, in the future. Um, I don't know about you, I love hearing uh, the stories of the Gideons and I'm, I'm really blessed because every year when the Gideons have their annual banquet and they invite pastors uh, from the community, which you know about very well, Dale, uh, it's, they always have someone come in who shares a, uh, their, their testimony and it's just amazing. Um, often a Damascus Road kind of testimony and I can really relate to that because my own testimony is, is that kind of a testimony. So uh, just praise the Lord for the, for, uh, for the work of the Gideons uh, around the world. Um, We need we need these these troops, these ground troops that are on that are on the that are on the ground all over. Uh, because for you and I and for our work schedules and this that and the other thing, there are reasons why it isn't us. Uh, maybe God is calling you to be involved in the Gideons, and I'm sure our Gideons in our church would be glad to talk to you about your involvement in that ministry. Um, but let's in the meantime keep the Gideon ministry in our prayers and support them with our gifts um, and praise the Lord for them and pray for them as they're out there in some not always uh, friendly uh, areas. So we thank you again, Graham, uh, for coming and for sharing and Dale as well. Thank you. Let's stand. Uh, we've got uh, <sighs> throw our last so uh, song on uh, to Kevin. It's on the tape there. And we'll uh, sing Jesus all for Jesus uh, because it's this song is a personal testimony of all that we are and all that we have. It belongs to the Lord, so let's offer it up to Him in these in these words of praise. Uh, Jesus all for Jesus, all I am and have and ever ever hope to be. And then we will scurry to the park. They'll wait for us. Okay, here we go. Jesus.
Amen. Lord God, we thank you and praise you for your wonderful love in Christ Jesus. Thank you for Graham, Lord, and for the Gideon ministry. Bless them, Lord, with your power as they obey and go forward to bring the word to all the nations, Lord. Help us as your local church, Lord, to do the same. To share the word, to share the love, to share the grace, Lord. And do so genuinely and generously. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that goes with us this day. Thank you for the worship that's already getting ready to start in Middleburg. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to be a part of that as well, Lord. We just want you to have all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, amen. amen. Have a great day, and if you're going to continue your worship, we'll see you in the park in a few minutes.